we place people in positions in the church because of their social influence or political connections. We place people in places where they are honored in the house of God, either because of the money, their tithes, and their offering. You mean God can't support his work without that woman pushing drug? Eh? You mean God can't support his work without that man who is a member of a cult in the lodges, having two women at home and having concubines? And you, the pastor, you know about it. The church elders know about it. That man sleeping with all kinds of women in the church. And nobody is able to discipline him. That's why revival of truth has to come. That's why we are talking about revival of truth. We need to talk more about it. Because many persons won't touch it. I say many persons won't touch it. Can you imagine even what the Lord revealed to John in the book of Revelation? Huh? He spoke about the woman, Jezebel. That woman called herself a prophetess. Not even the pastor gave her, but the pastor has no God to stop her. She must be a very powerful woman. Because we are told that the woman was the one taking the men to bed. Not the men dragging her to the bed. She takes the men one after the other to sleep in her house. To commit adultery and fornication. Read it in the Bible. And yet she could not be stopped. And the Lord said through John, I am coming for that woman. I am coming for that woman. I will put her on the bed. And all the men who slept with her. They are all going to die. Because you. The angel of the church. You have not got the courage. To stop what the woman is doing. Huh? Look at it. Let me read it for you. I've just opened it. In the book of Revelation chapter 2. Interesting from verse 18, Revelation 2 18. It says, And unto the angel of the church in Tyra writes, These things said the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Watch it. I know thy works and charity. And service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. So this particular church they are full of activity, fish fry, barbecue, dance, parade, fashion show, bazaar. Mention it. They are full of activities. But listen. From verse 20. Notwithstanding. I have a few things against thee. Because. Thou permitted. Thou sufferest that woman. Jezebel. Which calleth herself a prophetess. To teach. And to seduce my servants. In plural. To commit fornication. And to eat things. Sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. She repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery. Remember he mentioned fornication before. And they also commit adultery. Don't let somebody deceive you. Fornication and adultery are not the same. Hmm? Fornication committed by those who are not yet married. Adultery by those who are married. So this woman, he will take young people who are not yet married to come and sleep with her. Just like Potiphar's wife was trying to drag Joseph into it. But this woman was perfectly effective. Take young people who are not yet married. Young boys. Youths. Young adults. 
take them one by one to her house to come and sleep with her. And the pastor can stop her. The church elders can stop her. The deacons can rebuke her. She's so influential. She has money. She has social position. It is possible the pastor is afraid. If I rebuke this woman, the church tear into pieces. If I remove this woman, then no more church. Everybody will go with her. But not me wrote this. This has been written before my, my father and your, your mother were born. He said, notwithstanding, hmm? verse 21 says, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she, she repented not. Verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Except they repent of their deeds. Verse 23. And I will kill her children. You know what that means? That woman, anytime she gets pregnant, she commits abortion. She was also encouraging young people in that church to commit abortion. And I will kill her children with death. Hmm? And all the churches shall know that I am he who searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. In other words, it is possible in your church, in your church, or the church you say you have been visiting, adultery is rampant. Fornication is rampant. Abortion is rampant. Homosexuality is rampant. Bestiality is rampant. Sleeping with animals. Don't talk. Are you the only one? See no evil. Say no evil. Live in peace. And the church is dying. Satan is taking over the pulpit. False prophets are reigning. False evangelists are reigning. Apostles of different kind. Some of them even using magical means. To do wonders. We are only excited when they touch this, it dropped like a mango. It dropped, touch that, it dropped like a ripe guava. And in our mind, hey, what a miracle, what a wonderful thing. It's when we get to heaven, we we'll realize what evil and danger and destructions these agents of darkness have done. If you are blessed of God with ability to preach, if you are blessed of God with the gift of singing, if you are blessed of God with stamina to run around for the gospel, if you are blessed of God to give financially to support a ministry that preaches the truth in order to destroy lie. You know, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. And he told them, you are of your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. And does not abode in truth at all. Yes, look at it right there. In John's Gospel, chapter 8, from verse 40. He said, but now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth. Remember, the contention is truth. Revival of truth. Jesus was maligned. Persecuted. They ruffled him. He said, because he was telling them the truth. Sometimes you wonder how those who tell lies and live in wickedness, how they live longer. How are they more decorated publicly? And they have greater prestige and greater opportunities even in the public space. And yet they live by lie. Look at what the Bible says. 
Huh? Verse 40. But now you seek to kill me. A man that had told you the truth. Which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Jesus further said in verse 42. Jesus said unto them. If God were your father. You will love me. For I proceeded forth and came from him. Neither came I of myself. But he sent me. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. Ye are of your father the devil. Huh? And the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer. From the beginning. And he abode not, watch it again, he abode not in the truth. Revival of truth. You know, Satan told lies to Eve. Huh? And he has done similar things to people to deceive them and mash up their life, destroy them. You know how many marriages he would have destroyed? How many people he has told lies that there's nothing wrong with smoking ganja, inhaling cocaine, and using ash oil? Huh? How many young people have destroyed their life that you get more money by prostituting, selling your body? Huh? How many even married women, I say married women, have given themselves to public sexual transactions? Hmm? I pray God will use us to promote the truth. Just look at what Jesus said here. Interesting. He said he was a murderer from the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. And he is the father of liars. I pray you will not choose the devil to be your father. I say I pray you will not continue to tell lies. You see, every time you tell lies, you identify with your father, the devil. You tell lies to your husband. You tell lies to your wife. You tell lies to your employers and to your employees. You tell lies to your landlord. You tell lies to your pastor. In your giving of tithe and offering, you tell lies. Huh? Some so I heard someone using the word pathological liars. But nothing goes so. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he cannot be a pathological liar. He's transformed. All he needs to do is to acknowledge the fact. I have been lying for years. And I want to be free from the spirit of lying. I want to speak the truth, believe the truth, obey the truth. Because... Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. As I look at the clock, I should stop in 15 minutes' time. But let me give you a scenario. In First Kings chapter 22, First Kings chapter 22 reading from verse 2 this is a story of a, a king called Jehoshaphat who allowed himself to be deceived when he's supposed to be a godly man in first king chapter 22 reading from verse 2 it says and it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat the king of Judah came down to king of Israel and the king of Israel said on, unto his servant, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people. My horses are thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, watch it now, Inquire, I pray thee at the word of the Lord today, whether we should go for the battle. 
Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, prophets, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into thy hand, into the hand of, of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, now these 400, all of them are false prophets. And Joshua said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord beside these 400 prophets that we might inquire of him? Listen to what the king of Israel said. And the king of Israel said unto Joshua, uh, There is yet one man called Mikai, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Joshua said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Joshua, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes, in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before him, 400 prophets. They, all of them prophesied before two kings. Watch it now. And Zedekiah, the son of Kenana, made him horns of iron and said, Thus says the Lord, With this shalt thou push the Syrians until thou hast consumed them. And all the prophets, 400 plus, prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into, thy, into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Mikai spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophet declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Mikai said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. Are you following? So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Mikai, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into thy hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? <laughs> and he said, Now Micah is now changing. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as the sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Joshua, Did I not tell thee that he will not prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. The prophet is now telling him. All the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on the left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said um, on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Can you hear that? He will go to become a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him. And prevail. Go and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah the son of Chenana went near and smote Micah on the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micah and carry him back unto Ammon the governor of the city. 
and to Joash the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow, that is the prophet of God, in the prison, and feed him with the bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Hacking, O people, every one of you. Find time to read the rest. That king was killed in that battle. I want to pray with you. Ask God to give you the gift of discerning spirits. Ask God to give you the courage to speak the truth all the time. To preach the truth all the time. Abide in the truth. You'll be free from oppression. Take it from me. Ye shall know the truth. I'm not going to pray a long prayer. If you are suffering oppression, if you are suffering defeat, if you are being embarrassed by some evil, strange spirit at night, just say, this night, I believe in the truth. I will abide in the truth. I will proclaim the truth. Huh? And you'll be free. You will be free. I don't care. As I'm talking now, there are at least three or four persons, ladies, you are really embarrassed whenever you sleep at night. By these unseen faces. You know what they do. You wake up sometimes feeling so bad about yourself. This night, this moment, is your freedom time. Is your freedom time. Yes? Listen to me. As I listen, over five persons are listening to me. You have master's degree from university, but no job. Almost wearing rag, begging to eat, but it can end this night if you will believe the truth, obey the truth. Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and life." Believe him, obey him, hug him, and your problem will melt. Just melt like that. If it will melt, let us pray. If you know you've been telling lies and living in lies, just say, "Lord, I am sorry for the lies I have told." To my wife, to my husband, to my employees, to my customers, to my clients. Maybe you are a lawyer or a doctor. I am sorry for the lies I've told to my wife, to my husband, to my children. Repent of it because all liars, according to Revelation chapter 21, they are going to eternal damnation of perpetual suffering. But God don't want you to perish. It is not the will of God that any man should perish. But that all should be saved. And you will be saved this night. I say, you will be saved and be sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. You will be saved and be healed. If you will say, Lord, here I am. All that I have done in the past, sinful before you, forgive me, cleanse me. I will do your will. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your word this evening. As to how we Christians, born again believers, must defend the truth. Abide in the truth. Project the truth, O God of grace, O God of all grace. I pray for all my listeners, all those who are watching on the Facebook, and those who will be watching on television. The moment they repent of their past lies and sins and wickedness and adultery and fornication, hey. God, the moment they embrace the truth, because there are some who know the truth, but refuse to embrace the truth. As they embrace the truth, let the shackles of the enemy be broken in their lives. In Jesus' name, let the power of the evil one be broken, be shattered in the name of Jesus. The bad dream, the bad luck, I remove it from you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
that prison door where you are. You are locked in by the enemy of your soul. You are locked in with some principalities and power. You are locked in by members of your family. And I am here with the anointing of the Almighty God. I open that prison door. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. I say, come out in Jesus' name. And all the chain on your feet, all the chains in your hand, all the muslin of your mouth, and all the all that the enemy has put upon you, I remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. Be whole, be healed, be freed in Jesus' holy name. I thank you, my Father. I thank you for sending me to your people. I thank you because I have not kept the truth away from them. I have spoken thy word as you gave it to me. I have spoken thy word and as many as are receiving, walking on that truth right now, let every power of darkness, let every spirit of oppression and depression, let them be melting away, melt away and melt away in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, good God. Receive all glory. Receive all honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. My friend, thank you for being with me for this period. I know the Lord has blessed you. I am not in doubt about it. Trust me. I am not in doubt as to what God has done in you for you. All you need to do is to trust and obey to be happy in Jesus. You know, let me just sing a little bit of that song. Trust and obey to be happy in Jesus. Because God has made provision for you to be happy. And there's no reason for you to be unhappy. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His word. What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Nor the shadow can rise, nor the cloud in the sky, but his smile quickly drives it away. Nor the doubt, nor a fear, nor a sigh, nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, but there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not the burden we bear, nor a sorrow we share, but at all he doth richly repay. Nor the grief, nor a loss, nor the frown, nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey.